the real kind of place where I started to, you know, really gravitate towards music were, was in the clubs, uh, in kitchen clubs like, um, you know, uh, uh, Fat Alberts was a big uh, was a big club in kitchen, and it was through the DJs. 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 Um, there was a, a, a DJ by the name of uh, Ivan, Ivan Hickson, uh, and just an incredible uh, DJ. There was the twist. They were a massive integral part of bringing acts to the area from Naughty by Nature, Black Sheep, you know, like some early, early hip hop that wouldn't have otherwise come to the area because I don't think any of those guys knew what Kitchener Waterloo was. So we opened up for Ghetto Concept at a place downtown called the Metropolis, and I remember that place was so packed that the floor was vi like bouncing like this. Yeah, I had the flu. <laughs> I had the flu at that show. I literally only stood up for my verses, and then I went back and leaned on the wall at the back of the. That was a but pretty memorable one. Though. I wasn't gonna miss it. Performing at at stages in inner city was an amazing experience, um, especially opening up for Shaw Claire. So since these clubs were playing music that wasn't just hip hop, when we saw these kids that were drawn to us on stage, they were going nuts. Um, they were drawn to the energy of, of these you know, hip hop artists performing in front of them. And I really feel that we won them over, like we were signing autographs, uh, you know, we were selling CDs. Good friend Josh uh, was the owner of Starlight, and uh, when we would bring in hip hop acts, we were lucky enough to be get the call, you know, and be like, "Do you want to open?" So, you know, the classifieds and all these people who coming through, like, you know, we were on stage for that. Dream Warriors came here in 2000, or sorry, 1994, to promote um, the new show um, for the Subliminal Simulation record. Midway through the set, they call us up, and I was, I was like shook, you know what I mean? So I, I go up there. Me and my boy Sinister, who's another amazing MC that came out of here. We go up there, we do our thing, and we did good, you know? It was one of those where like, we'd put flyers out, like this is where it's gonna be, right? It wasn't like a popular club downtown or anything like that. And dude, like, we'd pack that place. Say from 2000, say 2002 to 2004, yeah. you know, we opened for the Rascals, we opened for Chaos, we opened for Cardinal, we opened, uh, we had shows alongside Shad. Um, we went to Buffalo and uh, West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher opened for us. So the DMCs were this cross Canada tour of you know sort of the best of the best DJs in Canada. We were super lucky, you know, as as uh, a region to to have it here in our city. And like I said, it, it played such an integral part in shaping you know DJs and and, and exposing and exposing people to the art of DJ and turntablism. So I think for the uh, Tri-Cities Producer Showcase that I used to host at Maxwell's, I ended up doing those actually in a bunch of different cities around Ontario. People would uh, come to the event in Waterloo and then ask if I could bring it to their city. So I con uh, was in contact with uh, Paul Maxwell and had this idea. And uh, yeah, and it went over really well. And I think we did over 20 of them. So at the time, you know, Grandmaster Flash and uh, Furious Five, The Message, you would walk on the, the Tremont Avenue in the Bronx and you'd walk on that street and it seemed like every station was locked in to playing that song. I think ATB impacted the local hip hop community by giving hip hop artists an outlet. We played on the radio. We played, we played a lot of the artists' music on the radio. I think I tried my best to put local artists on. Um, when I was on commercial radio, 91.5 The Beat, I would do my best to play as many local artists as I could. I know it's, it's super important for people to, to get on the commercial radio, to get that SOCAN, you know, your first SOCAN check. In like 92, 93, CKMS 100.3 was the only station on the dial that you would tune in and you would hear hip hop because B. Mello had a show called The Wax Jungle. And so he'd be playing stuff, like the first time I ever heard Mob Deep, Shook Ones Part Two, and shout out to B. Mello because I was like 12 and he let us host a show, curate our own set. Yeah. And, um, you know, we are just in love. After that, it was all over. We were in love with the culture. I remember somebody recording me. It was uh, each letter of, 
of um, the name Scars. Okay. I would write, I would have like a good eight bars of S, good eight bars of C, eight, good eight bars of A, and so on and so forth. So um, I remember somebody recording that and I just remember people coming into the room, hearing it, hearing it, and they kept coming Fire. into the room. So it was just, yeah, those days were, those days were dope, yeah. Man, that radio station, like for us, it was, it was everything because you want to be on the radio right and here you have guys like yo bring me your music i'll put it on the radio so for you know what i mean for us that was like that was incredible to have that outlet because i mean now you know you want to be on spotify 90s you want to be on the radio dog he had a show called the wax jungle and there was a group on there called products of a gold mine b had played their song on tkms and again i'm young and I'm like, oh man this is, it's a local group right we came in we performed we performed like rough tracks, we performed new tracks, we performed old tracks. Freestyle. But I just remember like people just kept pulling up. I think we started the night with just us and ended yeah. the night with like 20 people, people around in the room. Yeah. Just yeah. vibing, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that to me was like one of like my favorite nights, you know? My start in hip hop in KW, you know, it started in the early 90s. It was the mixtape era time. And yeah, the mixtape scene was super popular back then. And you know, high school kids, there was a lot of guys rapping, freestyling, freestyling on the corner, and then it got to the point where, you know, people wanted to do it on, on the mixtapes. So I started bringing people in to do, you know, to freestyle on mixtapes. All the guys that could rap at the school, we'd, you know, walk over, that was a spot on, oh gosh, that was on Wellington Street uh, in Kitchener. Everybody would walk over there and freestyle at lunch, skip, skip class, freestyle, record, and that's where it all started. It started with the mixtapes. During the one mic process, the whole inspiration was to give everyone a chance to shine, local guys, and there was also some um, some na some national guys like Classified was on there, a couple of Toronto guys were on there. DJ yeah. Flash yeah. was the first guy to come to us and say, "Hey, just give me some tracks, and I'll put it on a mixtape." He, mix yeah. he did, I think, three volumes with us. He did a Scars and Clue one. Like he was very, very, very positive and supportive yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to what we were doing, and I, and I just want to shout him out for that. If you're talking about important spaces, like just off like the beginning, I think Starlight and uh, Third Degree, at least for me, like those are the most important places in the city. But we started recording at Third Degree when uh, I, I feel like it was newer. D was just trying to get it off the ground and it was upstairs instead of downstairs, right? So it started off in the upper level in the back of the building and uh, that's where we did the Berlin experiment. Third Degree was, um, it was a, we didn't deserve it. It was such a blessing space that we could go, you know, not unlike say this space that we're in right now where it was, it's, uh, it's someone who is authentic and is behind it and someone that likes the culture and is someone that's comfortable like, you know, saying like, yo, here's the keys and I'll come back. But uh, it was D Myers who owned Third Degree and he was an engineer and he took sound seriously. Me, Mantis and Haja decided to do the Berlin experiment, um, which was, uh, you know, at first it was gonna be like an album for us, but then we were like, well, there's all these great artists. Let's try to reach out to them and see if we can't make it a compilation. Um, and we sort of met the embassy guys, and a lot of the embassy guys um, were older and sort of like helped raise us from a pup, you know, and like, again, incredible artists like Galak and uh, Kane and Glory and Astral. Astral was the youngest and the most talented, and he set a sort of, sort of set a standard that, you know, he pushed the Overton window, as they say, where it's like, wow, this guy's he's just going to KCI and he's rapping like that, and and I don't hear anyone else in the country rapping like that. And Nefcon. And Nefcon, we were fortunate enough, was technically the elder. So he was the first rapper out of Kitchener and Waterloo to put to have a, his music video on Much Music mm. under the name Clay Baby. So Clay Baby, this is like 1990, 1991 at most. Fraction, um, one of the guys I salute a lot to. One, one guy that I. Um, looked up to a lot when it came to music and the way that because he, he was kind of you know when it comes to bars that's kind of where i'm at like I'm not into really making songs i, I want to just spit bars and create the best lyrics possible i was down in chandler drive here in, in kitchener and that's that's where i grew up but i was drawn to hip-hop um, because of all the different forms of hip-hop that uh, things that are included in hip-hop like b-boying uh, break dancing, graffiti. Because I loved creating art, I would I would just do like you know murals on the wall. 
um, you know, we'd listen to music, uh, you know, at someone's house, and we'd uh, we'd try break dancing. <laughs> I actually I actually chipped uh, a little bit on my tooth uh, at uh, Cameron Heights um, trying to do like a windmill. <laughs> You know, I went to high school in Waterloo for a little bit, but ultimately all roads led to Kitchener, uh, Cameron Heights, KCI, the bus terminal, which we're sitting across from now was like, you know, people would congregate there, there'd be freestyle battles taking place, that sort of thing. When I was at Greenfield at that studio, I never thought in a million years I'd be working with Maestro Fresh West, right? Yeah. He was a hero to us then. Fashion was an integral part of the entire culture. And when I put the concept together for Loop, it wasn't just about the clothes on the rack. It was also about the music we were listening to. It was about the people. And it was about sort of the elements that are involved with hip hop. Yeah, there was always someone that was just pushing it even much further than you could ever have imagined. And that's hip hop. Hip -hop. No matter what vehicle I think my, art, my artistry is coming through, um, my creativity is coming through, that KW hip hop foundation is always going to be like a huge part of that because I spent so much time honing my craft there with those guys. And I think that's what's beautiful about the you know the, the fact of music is is that it it through a lot of um, you know even the Francis's and the Ruddocks and, and and different people that were were influenced from this very small uh, city uh, and how impactful that music has been to another level of uh, of our legacy.